I, I'd like to comment on, on the sharing because uh, Kristen is asking us to share this and we do that uh, very much within the center community. We do a lot of exchange of, uh, for example, this data validation and also within the CC NSO uh, community. So I'm not as uh, concerned about not sharing because all the registries are having very good communication around issues like this. But it's more, it, we all have different systems. It's not easy to change overnight. So, so for us, it's, it's fairly new that we've become more strict. Um, like you say, it's a year for um, the UK and we just did this since 1st of March this year. And we're all very keen to get as much correct data as possible. So if we do validation towards the European register too, but it's not as good data as the Danish business register or maybe the Swedish. So we, we don't want to discriminate. So we can't say we just do validation for Sweden and Norway, but not France and, and UK. So we either do it for all the European countries or just stick to Denmark. Well, uh, then personally, I think you should do it at least for all European countries. I think, uh, especially for companies, that should be possible. If you uh, um, want to do it for private persons as well, are there systems for doing that? Uh, you know, it depends on how extensive you want to do it. Uh, many years ago, Dot uh, uh gave the registrars um, access to sign on an agreement to do um, like signing. So we, uh, with this agreement, we would have access to all the digital signed features they had in a lot of countries. So that is, for example, um, that is more or less the same as NEMID in Denmark. Uh, so, so there is systems that you can use to do more validation on uh, private people in, in most of Europe. Okay, in our effort to have uh, valid and I would say correct registrant data, it's a cost involved. So before I go on to my main question for this session, I, I want to agree upon when we do we need actually registrant data? I mean, for a registrar, uh, you need to send at least an invoice probably once a year. Most of the registrars do it by email, some one maybe postal letters. Uh, you need uh, uh, the email address to send out an off code. The registry side, I would say, we only need it in, in two ways. Uh, either if the registrar has not succeeded sending out the auth code to registrant, we can uh, do that uh, also. So then we need a uh, valid registrant email address. In case of a last resort, uh, uh, if a uh, registrar is kicked out and the registry has to uh, run a last resort, we, for the test, we then use both the um, email address and uh, the postal address, we're also sending out a postal letter. Uh, and uh, are there any more uh, cases when we need the correct, yeah? ADRs. Yeah, for dispute resolution, <coughs> yes, that's right. Any more? Well, like I said, in Iceland, if you, if you have a selling site, you have a store, online store, mm. and you want to accept credit cards, yeah, then but you must have your green mark, yeah. Well, th th this, is, this is just something that the banks in Iceland have taken up yeah. on, on, on themselves. They just use it because it's free and mm. it's easy to use it. Mm. Yeah. But uh, uh, in our case, it, because you mentioned cost, and uh, for, for a small registry, we, 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 it would be impossible for us to, to do what, what Nominet is doing so bravely. And... <coughs> and, and, and we have had, th this links to a question that is uh, about, the, ab about uh, registering a domain for many years. And uh, one of the reasons that we have not, we, we did not want to uh, enable 
registrants to pay for many years is that we want to keep the uh, paying information to update them at least once a year. And uh, with the paying information, we can use, uh, use those information for the validation as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have thought of is that to be, because the, the credit card companies are using our information, we, have, uh, we want to reach out and have already done that. We want to reach out to them and, and have information about the credit cards. It's a follow the money uh, procedure. So uh, that's what we are thinking about now with foreign registrants, that to, to get hold of uh, trustworthy uh, in information on the credit card and link that to the, uh, to the domain. Yeah. And we also have the conclusion that all the efforts we put into validation doesn't help regarding the criminals. They will still having domains. So my main question is then, uh, how much effort should we put in? I mean, this costs money. And actually, I'm afraid of losing sales if I put too much energy into this because our foreign registrars would think we would be too complex to work with. What do you say, Christian, about that? Well, um, it depends on the system you're making, of course. Uh, I don't see a lot of registration losing in Denmark, for example, but I'm also uh, very sure that a lot of, uh, well, both Danish and foreign registrars uh, do hate the system, <coughs> uh, do hate the validation. Um, so, yeah, it's a very valid point. Yeah. Uh, okay, Lisa. Yeah, I just want to say that the Danish validation was initiated by ensuring anonymity for the registrant. Yeah. So, it's not been to actually target criminal registrants. Hopefully, we can get a better data quality, but I agree with Christian, if you want to uh, cheat, you can cheat with the system we have now. If, if we should do it differently, we should use a digital signature for everyone. Um, and that would rule out some countries for becoming registrants yeah. with the, the Danish registry. What is your opinion if we see verification control registrant data and validate it? How it, will it change in the upcoming years? Will it be more legislation like the ones we have seen in Denmark? Or will it be uh, more cooperation between uh, registers as the one Christian wants, mm. for example, in uh, in European Commission? What, what do you what do you think? Five years from now, <laughs> okay, Lisa. I'm sorry. Uh, I think it would be a great idea to share uh, uh, the databases, but then we have the problem about data protection, because we could. Uh, uh, try the registries to, to actually, uh, we could help uh, getting knowledge about uh, uh, residents in Denmark and uh, Sweden could help us with the Swedish and vice versa. So, so f uh, for me it's more, do we get into any trouble with uh, privacy and, and data protection here? So it's, for me it's a fine balance of ensuring that we get correct data and not uh, actually um, uh, breaking any data protection rules. Um, some questions from the audience? Yeah, over there, Sasha. Well, I think you could solve the data protection issues by just giving out, for example, a number or a code. For example, if you validate a register and he wants to register a .de domain, you could say, I'm validated and this is my code. And you could just check that the validation has been done. You don't need the actual data. I mean, it would be sufficient to know he has been validated, in my opinion. Somebody who wants to catch up on that? I didn't even get the question. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I think it's a very good idea that we try and find uh, a way to work together on this. And I think that if you, uh, your question was, what will it be in five years? I think you'll see a lot of more cooperation uh, with this. And I also uh, 
get a lot of interested uh, registries that wants to discuss how we do in Denmark, and I know the UK has also gained uh, has a lot of questions regarding their um, their validation model. So I, I think we will see much more cooperation between the registries, but um, if it's going to be only Europe or the whole world, we'll see. Yep. Okay, it's time to end now. Uh, 